Hello everyone, welcome to Math is Fun. Our lesson for today is all about integral calculus, particularly we're going to discuss and solve about indefinite integrals. These are the lesson objectives. First, we're going to define integral. Second, discuss the two types of integral. Third, define the indefinite integral. And lastly, solve indefinite integral. What is integral calculus? Integral calculus is the branch of calculus where we study integrals and their properties. Integration is an essential concept which is the inverse process of differentiation. There are two types of integral calculus. The first one is definite integral. What is a definite integral? When we say definite integral, it is an integral that contains the upper and lower limits. For example, start and end value is known as a definite integral. The value of x is restricted to lie on a real line, and a definite integral is also called a Riemann integral when it is bound to lie on the real line. The second type of integral calculus is indefinite integral. What is an indefinite integral? When we say indefinite integral, it is not defined using the upper and lower limits. The indefinite integrals represent the family of the given function whose derivatives are f and it returns a function of the independent variable. Furthermore, given a function f of x, an antiderivative of f of x is any function f of x such that f prime of x is equal to f of x. If f of x is any antiderivative of f of x, then the most general antiderivative of f of x is called an indefinite integral and denoted by the integral of f of x dx, which is equal to f of x plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant. Okay, let's solve some indefinite integral. So this is our formula. The integral of ex dx, this is equal to ex plus c. So example number one. Evaluate the indefinite integral. The integral of 6 dx. So this is equal to 6x plus c. Another example. If we're going to evaluate the indefinite integral, pi dt. This is equal to pi t plus c. Next example. The integral of 8 dy. So, what is your answer? Alright, this is equal to 8y plus c. Next example. If we're going to evaluate the indefinite integral, which is e dz, this is equal to, alright, e z plus c. Okay, we have another formula using the power rule. So, the integral of x raised to the power of n dx, this is equal to x raised to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. So, let's try this example. If we're going to evaluate the integral x raised to the power of 5 dx, this is equal to x raised to the power of 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1, then plus c. Let's evaluate. So, x raised to the power of 
5 plus 1, this is equal to x to the 6 over 5 plus 1, which is equal to 6. Then don't forget to include plus C. And this is the final answer. Another example using the power rule. So evaluate the integral x to the 8 dx. So this is equal to, all right, x to the 9th over 9 plus C. Okay, another example. If we're going to evaluate the integral x to the 7 dx, this is equal to, all right, this is equal to x to the 8 over 8 plus C. Another example, evaluate the integral 20x to the 9th dx. So, what is the answer? Alright, this is the way how we're going to get the answer. So, 20x raised to the power of 10 over 10 plus c. Then, let's evaluate 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2. Then, just copy x to the 10 plus c. This is the final answer. Another one, evaluate the integral 3x dx. So, what is the answer? Alright, so this is 3x squared over 2 plus c. And this is the final answer. How about this example? Integrate the quantity of 2y cubed plus 5y squared plus 3y minus 7 dy. So, how are we going to integrate this function? Alright, we're going to integrate each term. So, we have 2y raised to the power of 4 over 4 plus 5y raised to the power of 3 over 3 plus 3y squared over 2 minus 7y plus c. So, let's simplify further. So, we have here 2 fourth, this is equal to 1 half, or y fourth over 2 plus 5y cubed over 3 plus 3y squared over 2 minus 7y plus c. And this is the final answer. Another example, evaluate the integral the quantity of 4x squared minus 3x plus 5 dx. So again, we're going to integrate each term. So we have 4x to the cube over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 5x plus c. And this is our final answer. Another example. Evaluate the integral, the square root of x, dx. To answer this example, first we're going to rename the square root into power. So we have the integral of x raised to the power of 1 half dx. Then apply the power rule. So 1 half plus 1. This is equal to 1 half plus 2 over 2. We rename 1 as 2 over 2 by taking the denominator 2 as the numerator and denominator to make our fractions similar. Then add the numerators. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Then copy the common denominator which is 2. So we have x raised to the power of 3 halves over 3 halves. Then let's further simplify. So, x raised to the power of 3 halves times the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is 2 third. Okay, let's multiply. x raised to the power of 3 halves times 2 third, this is equal to 2 third, times the square root of x raised to the power of 3 plus c. We put back the square root sign in our final answer. Another example. Evaluate the integral, the cube root of x squared, dx. To solve this, we're going to rename the cube root into power. So we have the integral of x raised to the power of 2 third, dx. So we're going to apply the power rule. So 2 third plus 1. 
So this is equal to 2 third plus 3 over 3. Then add both numerators. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Then copy the common denominator, which is 3. So we have x raised to the power of 5 thirds over 5 thirds. Then let's further simplify. x raised to the power of 5 thirds times the reciprocal of 5 thirds, which is 3 fifths. Okay, then we're going to get the final answer. This is equal to 3 fifths times the cube root of x raised to the power of 5 plus c. And this is our final answer. Okay, we have another example. Evaluate the integral, the quantity of x minus 2 raised to the power of 2 dx. So how are we going to solve this kind of example? Alright, so we do like this. x minus 2 raised to the power of 2, this is equal to x minus 2 times x minus 2. Then we just copy dx. Then let's multiply the two functions. So this is multiplying binomials. So multiply the first term to the first term of the second function. So x times x, this is equal to x squared. Next is we're going to multiply the second term, the first term of the first function to the second term of the second function. So x times negative 2 is equal to negative 2x. Next, the second term of the first function to the first term of the second function. So negative 2 times x, this is equal to negative 2x. Then the last term of the two functions. So negative 2 times negative 2, this is equal to positive 4. Then just copy dx. Then let's further simplify, combining like terms. So the integral of the quantity x squared minus 4x plus 4 dx. Next, we're going to integrate each term. So x squared, this is equal to x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2 plus 4x plus c. Okay, this is our final answer. A one third x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x plus c. Okay, let's try another example. Evaluate the integral, the quantity x plus 3 raised to the power of 2 dx. Okay, the solution in this example, just like in example number 14. So first is we're going to expand the integral x plus 3 raised to the power of 2 into the integral of x plus 3 times x plus 3. Then we're going to copy dx. Then let's multiply the two binomials. So x times x is equal to x squared. x times 3 is equal to positive 3x. 3 times x is equal to positive 3x. And 3 times 3 is equal to positive 9. Then just copy dx. Then combining like terms, the integral of the quantity x squared plus 3x plus 3x is equal to 6x plus 9 dx. Then let's integrate its term. So x squared, this is equal to x cubed over 3 plus 6x squared over 2 plus 9x plus c. Then let's further evaluate. 1 third x cubed plus 3x squared plus 9x plus c. And this is our final answer. Okay, we have another example. So evaluate the integral 1 over x cubed dx. So we rewrite like this. The integral of x raised to the power of 3 dx. Then let's evaluate. So... This is equal to x raised to the power of negative 2 over negative 2 plus c. Then let's further simplify. So we have negative 
1 over 2x squared plus c. Another one. So, evaluate the integral 5 over x raised to the power of 5 dx. So, we rewrite like this. The integral of 5x raised to the power of negative 5 dx. Then, let's integrate. So, 5x raised to the power of negative 4 over negative 4 plus c. Then, let's further simplify. This is equal to negative 5 over 4x raised to the power of 4 plus c. And this is our final answer. Another example. Evaluate the integral 1 over x dx. So, the answer is equal to ln x plus c. And this is our final answer. Another example. Evaluate the integral 1 over x minus 5 dx. So, the answer is equal to ln times the quantity x minus 5 plus c. Okay, let's try some trigonometric function. So, evaluate the integral cos x dx. So, this is equal to the antiderivative of cos x. This is equal to sine x plus c. Another one, evaluate the integral sine x dx. The antiderivative of sine x, this is equal to negative cosine x plus c. I hope that you understand our lesson for today. Thank you for watching our video. With this, science is the differential calculus of the mind. Art is the integral calculus. They may be beautiful when apart, but are greatest only when combined.